One thing that does, I, th I think we've got right, is the, uh, is the intimate conversational nature to the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, the choir's talking to each other, feeding into the conversation, letting go and coming in again. Yeah. And I've always felt this very strongly about this music, that it must be an intimate conversation. Yes. But if you go back to St. Mark's Venice in the 16th century, uh, there is that nice letter from, uh, from one of the singers saying that Signor, whoever it was, had gone absent without leave. And because he was absent without leave, there was no one to transfer the beat from organ loft one across to organ loft two, because organ loft two couldn't see the, the direttore in the centre giving the beat. So, although I love this idea, and I think it's intrinsic to the music that it's sacred chamber music on a large scale, clearly in their, in their own time, in St Mark's, they did have issues of splitting everyone up and how, how the beat could be seen. Yes, but well, I don't think, I think you just made your own point, Robert, because what that means is that he was such a skilled passer on of the beat that it did sound like two intimate groups. Anybody can just be a subconductor, but this man was obviously so skilled that he could almost anticipate, mm -hmm. and they could act like two intimate groups. Yep. Even though, it's not very wide, the choir of St Mark's, is it? No, no, it isn't. The other thing I love about that situation is that you have this chap who disappeared was called Giovanni, mm. uh, and then you had Giovanni Croce, who was the boss at the yeah. time, <laughs> beat, and then there was Giovanni Gabrielli up in the organ. If you call out Giovanni, Giovanni. <laughs> yes. yes. But the other thing is that this intimate stuff, it's like Monteverdi Psalms in many ways, there is this endless intimate stuff, but then suddenly you get the grandeur suddenly yeah. expanding on top of yeah. it. And the way you can combine the two without it being, if you about it, it's still coheres, it's amazing. And that's where they, the composers seem to have this real physical sense of what it's going to sound like and how with the, you know, the extra octave. I mean, I've got the bass players playing down the octave. It's yes. perfectly reasonable with an ensemble this big to have a 16 foot pitch down the octave. That's where that, that richness of sound yeah really works well.